Hello and welcome to part 4 of the 6.3 km Westminster sightseeing photo run. In this section we'll be going from Embankment Station to Big Ben via the London Eye. Now when we cross over the Golden Jubilee Bridge we turn right and that will give us a different set of entertainment, more in terms of amusements with the London Eye, the London Dungeons. So if we go back to the 1560 map, just looking at the route we take, it would basically be marshland and not very much in the way of buildings at all. Now contrast that to moving a bit further on in terms of the 1845, you can see that the whole of the route is completely full up with factories and wharfs, very busy and congested. And you can see that development over time from 1795 to 1869. If we look at the map of 1869, and we can see there is quite a lot of development when the Victorian Embankment was built on this side of the river, but nothing was built on the eastern side where the London Eye is. We had to wait until the 20th century for that to happen. It happened with the old county hall being built in 1922 just by Westminster Bridge and then we had the Festival of Britain which developed a bit more of the area around where the South Bank is. But then we had to wait until further developments were done in the 70s and up to the end of the 20th century for this area to start to be fully developed. And as you can see from the map today, there were quite a lot of developments and entertainment slots around this area. But before we go into detail, let's show you this part of the route running at speed. We start outside Embankment Station and then we go through the station and then turn immediately right and go up the stairs to join the eastern side of the Golden Jubilee Bridge. Both sides of the bridge are Similarly designed, both have fantastic views. And as we look now towards the east, we can see that it has a great skyline of the city of London. And then as we get towards the end, we can see the Royal Festival Hall coming up in front of us. And there's going to be a set of stairs, which we're just going to go down. And then as soon as we get down to the bottom, we're just going to turn immediately around and go under the bridge and then we'll be facing Westminster and the London Eye that's we start to come into view. We're going to make a slight detour because we're going to go into Jubilee Gardens. This was this was recently developed in 2012 and then we got a, a great view of the London Eye and we've got County Hall to our left hand side. But it also gives us good views over towards the Houses of Parliament. Now on here we have the first building we come across is the London Eye. Then this next section here is for the London Dungeons. And then we have uh, the Shrekic Adventure. And then we also have Sea Life. And then we come out towards the end. We go up the stairs past the Code Lion. And then turn right onto Westminster Bridge, which is painted green to reflect the seats in the House of Commons. We've got good views on both sides of the river. It might not be easy to do this because they built barriers on each side to, uh, for public safety. And then we have the Portcullis House on the right and, and Big Ben. And then we stop here right outside Westminster Station. So before... I talk about the sites along the way. I'm going to show you a few 360 degree photographs of the route to help you navigate along the way. So this is a full list of some of the sites you see along the route. And then as we look at the embankment station in front of us, we basically are going to go through the basically the entrance hall and out the other side and as soon as you get out the other side you'll see that you will have the stairs in front of you to take you up to the top of the Golden Jubilee Bridge and you'll have the busy embankment in front of you. Now on the bridge as I said you can get some great views of the the city and then you just basically go right towards the end and there'll be a set of stairs as you come uh, along 
and it will you'll see the Royal Festival Hall will be in front of you. As soon as you get down to the bottom, we basically do a complete 180 degrees and then we've got the river in front of us. We just go under the bridge again and then we'll be in front or in front of the London Eye. Just do a quick tour around the Jubilee Gardens and then go past the London Dungeons until we get to the steps at the end. And then once we're there, we can go up those. We've got the code line on the left hand side. And we've got the London Eye just behind us, an old county hall. And then we're just going to take a beeline for Big Ben, which is in front of us. And then we're on the bridge. You can go either side of it to, to look at the different views, but there will be barriers in the way now from when this was picture was taken. Uh, just swing around and then we just head towards the, the station entrance just at this particular junction which will then finish this part of the photo run. Okay in terms of the sites we'll see we've got Embankment Station which was here in 1870. It was originally called Charing Cross. It's got two levels. The first level is where the district line was put in when it was first constructed when Victoria Embankment was laid out. But then it has a, a deeper underground network for the Northern Line, which was opened in 1914. The next thing we see, which we've been on before, which is the Golden Jubilee Bridge. Again, you've got good views of the South Bank and towards the city. And it was opened in 2002. And its basic design is to reflect the old Hungerford Suspension Bridge. When we get to Jubilee Gardens, this was really only developed in about 1977 as a public park. Before that, going back to the Festival of Britain in 1951, it had been the Dome of Discovery. Now, this has had a couple of developments over its lifetime, and it was redesigned in 2012 for the Olympics. And it's looking as it does today. The London Eye is one of London's landmarks now. It is a Ferris wheel. It did open on the 31st of December 1999 and it was called then the Millennium Wheel. It was supposed to be a temporary structure but with 3.75 million visitors every year it has now passed its 20th birthday. In terms of dimensions it's 135 metres tall, that's 445 feet and it's 120 metres wide. And it goes around at about one mile an hour. The number of pods do have a significance. They do represent the boroughs of London. And you do get some great views across towards the central London from this particular perspective. I always find it's best to do it where the sun is behind you rather than having it right in front. And as you can see from the pictures that follow, there's a few of the views that you can see going from the Houses of the Parliament all the way down to the, the city, which is basically the route that we've took today. As you approach Westminster Bridge, you do get some good pictures of the Houses of Parliament when it's not crowded in scaffolding. And as you approach the bridge and go up, you will see the Code Stone Lion, which was atop the old London Brewery. The other lion, because there were two, is in Twickenham. And originally it was red because the brewery was the Red Lion. It's actually made of artificial stone, that's why it's called Code Stone, and that was invented by Eleanor Code in 1769. So we get towards the end as we're going towards Westminster Bridge. have been across this a few times before. It is green to represent the House of Commons. It was built in 1750, but this dates from 1862, and it is the second oldest bridge in London, the oldest being in Richmond. And as we get towards the end, we do see Queen... Bodica, or Bodicea as I was always taught, she was queen of the Iceni, who were indigenous people to England or to East Anglia, and she made and she attacked the Roman on several occasions in Colchester and in London in 61 AD. But eventually she was defeated, and uh, legend has it that she was buried underneath King's Cross Station. Apparently, quite near platform 10. 
nine and three quarters maybe. The final thing we see of this part of the route is Big Ben, which is the clock atop the Elizabeth Tower. This is a relatively new name. It used to be called the Clock Tower, but this is the Elizabeth Tower to reflect the Victoria Tower, which is further up river. It first ticked in 31st of May 1859, and it has not really chimed since the 21st of August 2016 and if you go to the end of the run you will see a video of the, its last chiming on that date and we'll be discussing more of the Houses of Parliament or the Palace of Westminster as it's called in the next section.